Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Power Women in Insurance podcast. Today, we have a huge change. We have a huge shaker upper of the conversation in so many different areas. And we're also going to shake up our format a little bit because we are excited today to be able to have our first male guest. And we said in 2023, we wanted to be able to really branch out the conversation and we are doing it. So wow. today we are actually going to kick that off with Jason Pass, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about all the cool things that Jason is doing. But Jason, welcome to the podcast. We're excited to have you. Thank you very much. I, uh, I, as you know, I really truly am honored and kind of blown away when I found out about this. So this is, this is awesome. This is really, really cool, Teresa. Well, you know, I am so excited to have you on for a number of different reasons. And um, the first reason is going to be just because um, I've just, you know, we have just been able to get to know each other better through the whole podcasting type situation. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, When I first came out with the Power Women in Insurance podcast, you had me on your podcast, which was awesome to talk about women in insurance. And then um, we've been able to really get together a lot through that podcasting experience. And then I've seen Mm -hmm. you at tons of conferences with you have Brainshare, you have the Agency Intelligence Podcast Network, you have yes. all these different pieces of mm-hmm. your um, offering and your puzzle out there. So tell me a little bit, as we get kind of started a little bit, tell me how all these pieces for you, you have a book, um, all yeah. these pieces for you. Tell me a little bit about that journey and mm-hmm. how you're how you have really settled into mm-hmm who you are in the insurance community over the past um, uh, five to 10 years. Well, this is dangerous because that's a lot. And then I like to talk a lot. (laughs) So Teresa, I I really will try to cut it short, but wow, you, you asked a lot of things. Yes. I, I I am a a true entrepreneur. I love to take risks and don't know how I'm going to get out of them. I love to jump off the cliff and build my wings on the way down. Right. Um, Those, those type of things are true, but yes. Um, So I am a three location agency owner in Southern Illinois, and I have a passion for the insurance industry. Very big with the big eye was the national young agent chairman back in 2010 to 2012. And then I started, then I got out and I started agency intelligence. Um, I actually started agents influence. That was my podcast and funny to be known, Teresa. I don't know when this is coming out, but my very first podcast came out March 22nd of 2013. It'll be 10 years. Wow. That years. is great. Congratulations. 800 plus podcasts. It's uh, it's amazing. And you realize it too, right? You just look up one day and you go, oh my gosh, I've done that many. You know, it just starts yeah. that way. So then, yeah. So then I, I did Agents Influence. Um, and then and that was the first podcast. And when, when we did Agents Influence, this is important to know, um, this is still my motto and sl- slogan today. Is, is, is to give um it's to create forward change and momentum in the greatest industry God ever created by giving a voice to those who have no voice. Before oh everybody God. had a podcast, there was all these ideas that were sitting around inside these rooms and these agencies, and they weren't being told. And then I was for the big eye. I would go on these stages and I would do these presentations, and people would come up to me and give me these ideas. And I'd think, and I'd say, Well, why don't you tell that to somebody? And then one guy said to me, he said, you have the microphone, you tell them. And I thought, <laughs> okay. True. So then I thought, well, wait, I'm going to do this podcast thing and I'll give everybody the microphone. And then I remember when there's some other podcast started coming out in 2018, 2019, people were like, aren't you upset that all these other podcasts, I'm like, no, it's giving a voice to those who have mm. no voice so they can help create this change. Right. Yeah. So if we get, so if I'm able to help create change, if we got 10 people and 30 people and we get people in the women, now we're really pushing this whole thing. And that look where we are in 2023, the world is completely different. And so is the insurance industry. And, it is. And way, and and way it's more still for changing the good. fast. So and I mean, way you more know, for it's not good. slowing down. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. It really has. So yeah, I read the book. Customer service is just foreplay. It is the modern customer experience that will separate you. I wrote that in 2015. No one was talking about customer experience. Um, now everybody talks about it. And what I basically did was just took the the customer, the journey. Think of it this way, listeners. Think of it from when someone first hears your name to when the very end of the journey and they're buying multiple products from you and renewing, right? That whole journey there, I broke it into six stages. And then I gave you the tools that you would use in each one of those stages. And so it was an Amazon bestseller. It was awesome. And today, 
Now that same book is relevant, except those tools now are actually technology. So it's pretty cool. Right. So then, so then we created agency intelligence and I decided with my podcast, I was getting a thousand downloads a day. And there were people like Teresa, there were people like Charles Speck, people like James Jenkins, who I would ask him how many downloads they were getting. And I'm like, you know what? why don't we use what I've already created, right? Like you do your thing, Teresa, because you do it awesome. But if you want, we can also put it on this network. Right. And you will not believe how many people have told me, I love the fact that there's just one place I can go, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's all we care about is just getting our message out there. So we created that. So it's the insurance podcast network.com is out there, but that's actually part of agency intelligence. We created and just for the share. listeners out there. How many podcasts do we have on that network now officially? Because you've been adding 11. Okay. Cause I know that when I came mm -hmm. on, I think there were like five or six. There was. You I were think. Very, you and were very so, close. Yep. and then I know that we've, you've added quite a few over the course of the past, uh, mm -hmm. like two years. I think I've been with the agency intelligence network now for two years. Haven't probably I? I think the two, podcast probably. is three. And we're very picky at who we added. We actually have not added anybody in about eight months because there's just, there's a lot out there and I don't want us to overlap. And, I, and I'm and i waiting. I think I have found one. If you guys want to know that this is a great one, it's called The 10 Rules of Business. It's oh. by Sean Kirby and his father. And his father is the ex-CEO of Transamerica, retired at the age of 40. He tells this story, went to raise his kids, realized that he was an entrepreneur. Now he owns all these businesses. And Sean just sits down, who's a young agent in our industry, who's killing it, but one, very good friends with Mitch Gibson. And he just sits down and his dad gives the 10 rules of business and he gives one rule every time. And it, it is some of the most genius, great stuff that any agency owner can get out of. So anyway, sorry to be jumping around. Love it. But no, it is great. that. And then so so here we are today. Um, and I now, um, I do have another gig too. I also realized that the virtual, I created a virtual employee company because yep. I found I had a lot of friction. We've been using virtual employees since 2014. And it wasn't the best situation. Let's just put it kindly. And mm -hmm. so we finally decided to just start our own. And so that's what we did. But besides that, it all starts through delegation to be able to do all this stuff that we're doing. Yep. Yep. And I love how whenever you have these conversations with agencies, uh, principals, owners, uh, sales, people in sales, you know, account managers, whenever you're having those conversations, you internalize what the challenges are that they're really working with. And your mind automatically goes to how can we help? How can we try to be able to build solutions for that? that and I think that's really strong for you and just kind of your nature, because all of these things that you have between your book, between the podcast and the podcast network, as well as some other things we're going to be talking about today are really problem solutions in mm -hmm. the insurance space. And I love Amen. that your brain just goes there. Oh, good. It can't, I can't, I can't help it. I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> I really, truly can't. So, so I went to ITC, Insure Tech Connect this year, and I okay. went last year and I went this year. And I'm just going to tell you, it's, it's an, it's an overwhelmingly huge, it's all technology, but let's just be real. And everybody who's been there and listening to knows this for as far as um, independent agents, there's really not much there. It's all right. big tech carriers talking. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing their VCs and, and all the stuff that they do at the top level, but not like uh, I'm talking like technology being used for claims, but it's nationwide who's using it. It has nothing to do with us, right? Right. right. So I saw this and I thought, man, this is really great though. And then a couple of weeks later, I went to Applied Net and I realized that they have the best show and the best technology show. It's just all applied though, right? right. So I was like, how do we do this? And then I started thinking of ITC and then I was really motivated by some thinking of some stuff that happened. I do. I, I have a lot of glasses of wine and I think about this stuff way too much, <laughs> my wife tells me. But I started to realize something that if you go back to that journey that we were talking about earlier from beginning to end, mm -hmm. let's say that we split that journey right in the middle at the sale. Okay. I've really realized that insure tech, which is the word that's out there for all this technology for it. Yep. They, they have really helped us and they've really kind of helped us in that area, that first part of the journey. And that's with, with leads and lead conversions and CRMs mm -hmm. and uh, workflows and stuff like that. Okay. That come in on that. And really, if you think about that, Teresa, that's, that's something that any industry uses. We all use leads. We all use those type of things. 
I think we're getting ready to see the explosion, not of insure tech, but indie tech. Because mm. when we look, when we look at sales and after that process, you've got to be an insurance agent. You've got to know what's yep. going on to, to make and create software. So what are we seeing? We're starting to see a lot of independent agents who are making uh, software for us. I know anybody listening to this has always sat on the side of some kind of software in their agency and go, has anybody sat on this side of the desk in actual when yep. they were making this? Because this is terrible. You don't say that when you get when you get technology that are made by independent insurance agents, right? Right. So, so that is the. I was sitting in the back next to Peter McDonald, a wonder right uh, at an act meeting, and I said, "That's it. I'm, I'm going to create and I am going to facilitate the environment to on August 29th, 30th, and 31st of this year." In Indianapolis, Indiana, because we are independents. I love marketing, if everybody can't tell. <laughs> um, uh, we are going to be having indie tech. And this is nothing but a tech show. And this is the, this is this is for people to come and be able to find the technology. We have 147 tech companies that we have reached wow. out to. And Teresa, let me tell you this. This is what's amazing. Even me, I love tech. I know all these companies, right? I know like 30 of them. Like the other hundred wow. and some, there are so many other companies. A lot of them haven't even sold a dollar. I saw, I saw Chat GPT for insurance, and I kind of mentioned this a, a minute ago to you, a little bit ago, but it shook me to my core. Mm -hmm. it, really, it really did. It when I, when the gentleman explained to me that. Chat GPT is built off all the data of the world, right? Mm. Your agency is its own world. And to build the Chat GPT for your own agency is actually not very hard to do. And you don't need a lot of data. So trying to keep it simple. And then when you take that AI and you put it into your browser, now what it starts to do is it starts to learn how you're working and how you're and, and how it can assist you in that. And then when you think it has infants in, it has an infant amount of memory storage, it'll start to learn and watch you do a quote inside PL Raider for John Smith. But for the companies that don't connect into that, when you go over to that carrier to do the quote, it says, are you doing this for John Smith? And it's AI technology. And it doesn't matter how the question's asked because it's like you or I, even if the question's asked differently, our brain figures out and knows, oh, that's what it means. That's, right. what, art that's what artificial intelligence means. We're getting to the point in time, and this is mind blowing for people. And if you are a tech person out there, you know where it is. Everybody talks about integrations. Everybody talks about APIs. With AI technology inside the browser, you don't need APIs. You don't need. Mm. A, you don't need integrations. You don't need to be able to, to the information to go to this to this program to this program because all the AI is inside your browser. And if you go there, it's going to pre fill it for you as you're there. Wow. So yeah, th this is the things that I'm seeing out there. And so this is why I'm making this. You see this? This is why, because these people have no way of getting out there and knowing. And this is, why is this important? Because if we don't continue to do it, we start to lose market share. It's not that we're going to go out of business. It's not a doomsday thing. That's not it. Let's be realistic business owners here. For every bit of, for every, we have like a 33 or 34% market share in the auto and home market. Okay. I don't know exactly, but I did at one point in time, and I don't know what the new number is, but for like every million or for every percent that we lose our gain is like $180 million in, in revenue to the insurance industry. Oh, every, wow. Revenue to me and you, right? You can break that down and say, this costs me this much. Our technology is how we gain and show our true value of what we do as independence. Mm. And I think the more that we know that and the more we can create that customer experience through that customer journey using technology and real people, that's what's important about this. That's so important to, to say here. I'll, I'll, uh, Jeff Roy said this, this came, so comes to mind right now. Jeff Roy told me, he said, Jason, AI will not put agents out of business. But those agents who use AI will put those who don't out of business. Oh, I like that. I yeah. Like that. I said, Jeff, well, that's good. 
But I also feel like, and, and we talk a lot on the podcast specifically about the fact that agents have to be able to be forward thinking. Mm -hmm. We have to. And sometimes as indie, we get really stuck in our ways, right? This is how it's always been done. Or this is how, you know, it's just easier right now because we have so many, so many, so many things to do in one so day many. that the idea of bringing something else on becomes so overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we also have to be able to see that, you know, we are, a lot of our baby boomers are aging out of technology options in the sense that they, they do really well. A lot of them text, a lot of them do email and things like that. A lot of them have apps on their phone for various things and a lot of them don't, right? But mm -hmm. at the same point, then you get your um, 40 to 70, right? And those people are very into it. They're very into it, the vast majority. Then when you get 40 and below, we're not going to be able to service these different generations without embracing technology Amen, because of the fact that, I mean, like all these, you know, um, commercials, all these things where you can go online and get insurance in 15 minutes, right? People love those, the convenience, and we have mm -hmm. to be able to merge the personal relationship with a technological experience in mm -hmm. order to be able to keep those clients. So as our, you know, Gen Gen X and our and our millennials and our Gen Z are really a lot more into where we are as far as like our clients. We have to be able to bridge that gap between the 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 speed and the access to the information, as well as bringing them the service that they're not getting from the call centers and from the more cold environments. And Correct. tech is a way to be able to do that. Right. So, and also think about this. I mean, this affects us directly as agents is that you look at technology and very soon we will kind of laugh at our phones. We, we will still have them. We will still have them. But this will be one of the dumbest phones we'll ever know. And the reason is, is we will have our own AI. Because think about how unprotecting this, this phone is. Mm -hmm. If I read something that's fake and not real, it doesn't tell me. Mm -hmm. I need it to tell me in this world, the, the disinformation is not going away, right? Yeah. So, so when you start to think that it, it'll be Teresa will have her own AI, I'll have my own AI and my AI will protect me from your AI, basically in the conversations we're having, the bullshit you're telling me, whatever it could be, right? Now think about that as an agent. Think about that when you're sitting there talking to somebody or you start to tell somebody a coverage that they have and maybe you're embellishing a little bit and the AI is like, nah, that's that's not the way that that is, right? This starts to this starts to change the way we communicate. Now, I wanna I wanna tell everybody this and this sounds weird, but this is all good news. This mm -hmm. is not, once again, I'll, I'll say this a hundred times, this is not doomsday. You know, what's amazing is, is in Eastern cultures, in Asian cultures, a lot of the times their religions, and you can look this up, this is a fact, their religions believe um, that uh, things of metal and robots have a soul. And so that's why in Eastern cultures, they love robots. They see them as they have pet robots, everything. But in Western culture around Hollywood, we've been tortured and feared into the fact that it's going to take over, right? Yep. But yep. So far, it hasn't taken over. Email didn't <laughs> take us over. Facts. It's okay. And, right. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll even throw an, uh, an exclamation mark on that to say this. In 1999, the very first time Watson, which is an AI, it beat a master chess player for the first time ever and was never able to be beat again until 2008 when they thought you know what let's play not watson up against himself let's play watson and a human up against himself and ai has never been able to beat them if there's ai and man together so that's wow. what we're that's what we're learning here this is not a bad thing this is going to enhance what we do this is going to make things easier on what we're doing Right now, there's a lot of uh, probably CSRs and account managers that are listening to this and saying, yeah, my agency got these automations and I got to trigger this automation and move it in this pipeline. And oh my gosh, my world is, yeah, it's more organized, but I got all these things to do. You won't have to do that much longer. Give it yeah. a year, three years. The AI is going to help you. It's going to know what you're doing and where you're going to be going. And it's going to be built right into your browser. It's going to be your buddy that's going to help you every day. I promise it's coming and it's not far away. So it's uh, right. it's pretty exciting. It really, truly, it really, really pretty is exciting. So 
I want this stuff exposed. I want people to know this. We're also going to have uh, educational paths that are going to be taught. So in the afternoon and the evening, um, there's going to be paths taught where you can go in and learn and create and execute anything technology. Travelers may be there at Indie Tech, but they're there showing us the technology they they let us use to write their policies. They're not bringing their auto and home people there. This is a tech right. show. This is if you don't have some, if you're not an indie tech carrier or, or indie tech vendor company, you can't come. This is a, this is for technology, and so it's going to be a big deal. Having a big party on Wednesday night with a band too, so we're going to do it oh, right. You know me, I like a good band. You I know, know you I think we've had a couple of good conversations around a good band once or twice. Damn right, <laughs> a little yeah. bit of libation. You know, that's that's when all the good conversations happen, <laughs> right? Teresa. And then, you know, get me on a bus going to the next place and you and I will just be there all night long. (laughs) Hey, man, that. Been there. Been there. So, okay. So one of the things I do hear from agents out there is that it's scary, that it takes too much time, that there's Mm -hmm. too many options. They, you know, they don't really have time to even figure out what it is that their tech actually does. Like they might subscribe to agency Zoom or they might subscribe to you know, easy links or a certain management system or whatever, but they don't have the time to learn about all the nuts and the bolts that really hold the um, the system together and how it could really benefit them. They kind of learn the, what I call the icing on the cake. They kind of learn the, the top piece. And I know mm-hmm. that you are integrating your passion behind the customer service experience oh, um, yeah. and with that into being able to create a conference environment that isn't too overwhelming and that really makes sense for agents. So can you talk about that thank just you. a little bit? Because I uh, love that concept. That actually is an important part. I should have pointed that out before, but thank you. So yes, that's very important to, to, to what, what Teresa is meaning is, is that in that customer journey that we talked about, once again, that six layer of customer journey I did at the book, I'm doing the same thing here. So instead of picture a trade show, but not in an ex- a ballroom, this is an exhibit. This is this area is so large. It's one and a half times a football field. This is oh a huge goodness. area. And yeah. it is and picture almost a circle everybody. And in those circles, as you walk along that circle, you're going to walk through the customer journey and you will experience the technology that would be used at that point in the journey. So if somebody says, hey, Jason, where do you use WonderWrite? Well, I can sit here and tell you, well, it's used right in the beginning stage, right? No, you'll be able to see. And what you just said is important. People said they get overwhelmed. And here's what happens. They go to their local state conference or some show. And they talk to this technology company and they Mm -hmm. really like what they hear, but they think to themselves, well, I need to go check their competitors out, right? I need to go read the reviews, all the stuff we all do, right? Yep. But their competitors aren't in the same building. So now they have to leave and they get lost. That's why we're going to bring everybody, all the competitors will be there. And all the competitors are like, the the, the companies are already saying to me, Teresa, they're like, so you're telling me that like, my competitor is going to be right next to me. And I'm like, yes. And they're like, I don't know if I like that. I said, okay, let's look at this. Um, car dealerships do it. Um, uh-huh. a fast restaurants, food restaurants fast do food it. Restaurants, yeah. Gas stations do it. Walgreens yep. next to CVS. Folks, you guys are all thinking the wrong way here. You all want to be yep. next to each other. So Teresa can go, okay, so you're one of the three I got to pick from. Okay. All right. This is cool. I can make a decision now. I don't have to go back and do all this stuff. Not only that, we're having demo stages. So every two hour or every hour on on the stage, there will be two demos that'll be going on live. So you can look at the booth and then you can go down and watch their demo. And then we also have little meeting areas where you can go and you can get more in depth with the technology. We're creating a path for the attendees, but we're also trying to create a path for the vendors because we want them to get out there. I'm mm-hmm. invited some venture capitalists. I want people to come in that have money because there's people who need um, this stuff. The place I was talking to you about that has the AI in the browser, they haven't sold a dollar yet. So they can't afford to buy a booth. So what we did is right. we took booths and we split them into fourths and we sell a little kiosk corner for a thousand dollars. So even the, the person who has, doesn't hardly have any money they can afford, I know $1,000 seems like a lot, but for a tech company, they should have $1,000. Oh, yeah, it's not necessarily for a tech company. <laughs> right, yeah. But sure. yeah. Good point. So so anyways, we're trying to create an environment where everybody is involved here. This That is yeah. the point. I also have put in an invite um, to the Big Eye 
uh, CEO to Vertifor CEO, Applied CEO, Ivan CEO, and we're going to put them on a stage. And I mean, they they lead our, they speak for millions or not millions, but thousands of agents. We want to hear from them. We want to hear the good yeah. things they have to say and, and connect with them because I'll end with this. This is Switzerland. This isn't this isn't about big eye. This isn't about the PIA. This is not about Vertifor applied. This is not about tech companies. This is not, this is about independent insurance agents. Yeah. And that's what this is about. And then last, can I say one more thing? Cause this is yeah, important. Go for it. The show is on the 29th, 30th and 31st of August, but really the show is just the 30th and 31st on the Tuesday before is what we call indie sales. It's being led by Mitch Gibson. Um, and Krista, I cannot think of her name from Oklahoma. I knew I was going to forget her name. She's from Oklahoma Young Agents. Anyways, um, and what they're doing is, is they're putting on for young agents, 35 years or younger or three years in the business or less, as they consider a young agent. And they're putting on, literally, they're putting tech to the side. They're getting whiteboards out, learning how to, how to um, build pipelines, how to prospect, things that really is another thing that we don't get taught much here in our industry that we need to be taught. Yeah. Like we were taught at a young age. There's not a lot of those sales courses anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I told, I told Mitch, I said, well, if I'm going to do this and it's different, if you want, you can do your thing. And then, so it's indie sales on that Tuesday, but Wednesday and Thursday is indie tech. So I love it. I love it. Yeah. And um, now that you mentioned that um, I would love to bring my daughter because she'll be coming out of the state auto program. I think she'll be done with that in July. Ooh, pay and setter? then uh -huh, she's a pay setter. Great program. Great yep. program. Yep. So Great she um, just got invited to the second half. And so that is actually going to be February 26th through the 28th, I think. So she's going up to Ohio for that. So she'll be done with that in July ish. Um, but I would love for her to be able to talk about, to be able to go to that and be able to see kind of that pipeline. Cover. I mean, I know that they do so much of that with state auto and it's so great to be able to do it. And she's doing so well with that program. She really, really is. But I always feel like, you know, we always mm -hmm. have more to learn and we always have different aspects of conversations that different people bring in that just mm -hmm. keep the conversation fresh, you You're know, right about kind of that, thing. Girl. so mm -hmm. I would love for you her are. to be able to do that. Well, mm -hmm. So I think too, people get a little bit scared of the um, concept of being overwhelmed when people come into these types of situations. Um, and, um, and, and so I think I'd really like for everybody that's listening today to be able to realize that the way that this conference is being structured is more of a linear type thing. It's mm -hmm. not that overwhelm. You can take a break. You can go see a breakout session. You know, you can go talk to the, um, the, the, the companies. You're going to be talking to so many different types. But just to be able to just take it in a breather and be able to see what's out there, because for us to be able to harness the power of data, for us to be able to harness Harness the power of technology, text messaging, emailing, yes. all of these things. It creates systems and structures for our team. Yep. It creates a predictable experience for our clients. And it also increases our resale values at the end of the day, whenever we choose to be able to either sell or pass along our agencies. And for us to be able to keep our agencies fresh and impactful is super important to be able to bring mm -hmm. on strong, solid teams, yes. strong, solid clients, and be able to create a legacy type situation for ourselves, for those baby, you know, because we think of our agencies, our babies, we started them from scratch, right? It they're, is, yeah. They're, they're our personal um space that we feel very, very proud of. So I really want to challenge everybody out there. If you think, you know, maybe it's, it's tech might scare you a little bit because it scares a lot of people, but just to be able to get in there and take the chance, because this is going to be a different type of conference than you're mm -hmm. ever going to be able to see. Highly recommend getting Jason's book ahead of time. So that way, maybe you can even mentally get into that flow of what that space is really going to look like, because I think it's going to be probably, I not even probably, I think it's going to be one of the best conferences this year. It's going to be hugely impactful and it's going to be different than anything else that we're seeing out there. I'm glad you see it that way. I'm glad you see it that way. And I, now I got lost in everything you said. Something you said that was so great earlier about being uh, predictable um, business by having, yes. you know, has processes Systems and, and structure stuff. that's predictable. Yeah. So, so, so important. Um, my butt man, Billy Williams, who I find, you know, we all love Billy and he's, uh, he, if you don't know Billy, you should get to know him. Billy, Billy said something to me one time, and I actually put this in the book. Um, and this is so crazy, it comes back up. 
He said, why the customer experience is so important is he says, Jason, people know that it is terrible for them to eat at McDonald's. But why, when I drive by there at lunch, are they absolutely lined up, right? It's not just because there's a bunch of unhealthy people. It's because they know what to expect. Yeah. They know that the number two is this, and it's going to come this way. They don't. It doesn't matter if they buy it in California or if they buy it in Florida. It's going to be the same exact thing. And so when we just have a little bit of time and we need something simple, it's like, I got to go somewhere that I know I, what to expect. And that's why they do it. And we may, they may not be the best. They may not be the healthiest, but the people like to know what to expect. So when you mm -hmm. said that, that just absolutely clicked. And you're so right, Teresa. You're so right. Well, and it just gives our team and our clients such expect uh, a predictable experience by giving them that predictable experience. It gives them a sense of security, right? Mm -hmm. Like they know what, what they will get at the end of the day, whenever they open yes. a claim, they know that we're going to follow up with them. They know that we're going to be there for them. We know that mm -hmm. if something doesn't go right, because there are times that things don't go right, don't go as easily as we would like for them to, that we're here for them. And when mm -hmm. people feel like they are an island in and of themselves and they have no support and they have no ability to be able to um, manage a situation because they are not insurance agents. They're not in the industry. So many people get scared and then they go talk to their cousins, uncle, brother, whatever. And then all of a sudden some other agents going, well, here, let's go ahead and move your, you move your business mm -hmm. over here. And it's, and it, it, it's a loyalty thing in being able to give people that option for security and predictability goes a long way. It also it lets us be able to hire better team members. We talk a lot about how, um, I think sometimes people's perception of the insurance industry is that it's not as busy and fast paced. Mm -hmm. And they think it's kind of a little bit of a slower, older man, older they person's do. industry. And then all of a sudden they end up in this, in this agency and they get a job, they get licensed, whatever, all of a sudden, I hear people all the time who are like, oh, my team member just left me a note and said, this is too overwhelming and they can't do it anymore. And for us to be able to, I mean, number one, those probably are not the type of people we want to employ anyway. But no, but we've all point, had them. You're right. Yeah, we've all had them, right? Mm, we have. Yeah. And, but if we can have some of those situations where we can create that predictability for our team members too, then that is really going to go a long way for being able to have what what I call a ha just a happy agency, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I always say one of my biggest goals is just to be able to create a great agency where my team is happy, my clients are happy, and we make our goals. And honestly, mm -hmm. I'm not one of these people who want like this big $20 million agency for whatever reason. Right. I just really want an agency that people feel that they can, and I always mm -hmm. say, because I love Brene Brown, but uh, to live wholeheartedly. And then we have our our list of what that means to live wholeheartedly and our values. Love and it. that's part of what um, uh, technology and that's part of what streamlining our processes can do to be able to allow our team to be able to work um, independently as well as predictably and give our, our customers that, that awesome experience at the end of the day, no matter if Sally's taking care of them or Joe's taking care of them or Rachel's taking care of them. Our clients get the same robust experience. That's right, T. You're right about that, girl. You're right. You're right. I love it. And I love it. I'm really excited, too, just about where technology is going, because I know that with a lot of the data out there, that the data is starting to trickle down now to the agents mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and with tools that we can use, right? Like, um, you know, data like like Dora, I think, that, you know, um, ah, yeah. Doris, Donna, Dora, Donna, 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 that's what yeah. it is. Thank yep, you. That's right. Yep. yep. Who can no give problem. you some intelligence? Oh, this person subscribes to a fishing magazine. Maybe they own a boat, you know, mm -hmm. and different things like that. And I think we need to be ready for that transition because it's coming. Oh, yeah. Whether people want to stick their head in the sand or not, it's coming. Yeah. And it, I mean, like Donna specifically can read your clients and can tell you how likely somebody is to leave or to renew and what you could do to actually keep them if you did this or that. Is it 100% right? No, but let's say it's right 50% of the time. That's more than 50% of the time that we know right now, right? Yep. So you are exactly right. Data is very valuable. And and I just, and I just, one of the things I, I always, I just want to make it technology simple. If somebody's out there and they're just like, I still just don't like technology, I'm just not going to do it. Let me tell you how simple technology can be. Um, 
There are agencies that are listening, most of us, that go to a carrier websites every day and we get claims. We look at all the claims and what mm -hmm. updated and what didn't. And maybe we pull policy documents or maybe we look at cancellations, whatever we do. And we send somebody to do that to everyone. And now some of the carriers are starting to download some of that, but not all of it. So some of it you got to download, but you can't do that, yep. right? Right. Okay. We don't do that. And what we do is we have RPA, we have Adapt API is the name of the company. I don't own them. I don't get paid for them or anything. I'm just telling you, Jacob Simon is his name. And when we come in in the morning, we have an email with an Excel spreadsheet. And, uh, and when we open that up, it has all the policy documents that were pulled, all the claims updated. Wow. Um, it has all the cancellations report by company. And that was all done by a bot and it happens every night at two o'clock in the morning. It's getting done, you know, and so and then it delivers that report to us. So literally the, those hours and hours of time was taken away doing this. So when we say we don't like technology, here's the question we have to ask ourselves. Do we like doing things the way we're doing it now? And if you're going to be honest with yourself, no, you're overwhelmed, you're burdened. Mm -hmm. And you think because everybody does, it's cool. That if I go get technology, that will just be more. In a way, there yep. is a, some upfront work, right? But I promise you, like even with this bot, all you have to do is is they they record your screen while you go make it, while you go get those cancellations, and then the next day they come back and they say, okay, bot's ready to go, and boom, they press go, and the next day it's getting. There's no setup, there's no nothing, but you just eliminated getting all those things mm. that you have to do every day. Somebody's listening to this and they're going, oh my gosh. That's RPA automation. We have that in our agency. I'm going to tell you there's hundreds now of agencies, maybe thousands that have that. So you can start to see that. What does that mean? That starts to give you a marketing advantage. That starts to give you an advantage when you can start to use money in other places instead of yep. using it for labor. We can't afford to get labor just costs too much anymore. We can't continue down that road. Yeah. Amen on that one. I hear you that. Well, but Jason, thanks people... very much. What? I'm sorry. I said, thank you very much for having me on. I'm serious. This is great. This was Oh, great. no, no. I'm really excited. So remind me the dates of Indie Tech. It yeah. is? August 29th, 30th, and 31st in Indianapolis, Indiana, in downtown in the Indianapolis Convention Center. Perfect. And if people want to be able to register to be able to go to the conference, how can they get information about it? It will come out. We start registration on March 1st. I was thinking about going 15th. I still don't even know. And here we are 20 days away. Go to Indie Tech. That's I-N-D-I-E Tech. 2023.com indytech2023.com and you can find out information about it and probably for sure by the time this comes out it there'll be more information there awesome awesome and then if jason if people want to connect with you specifically <clears throat> you have so many different avenues for people mm -hmm. to be able to do so because you do have so many different platforms mm -hmm. um and your book is on amazon for those people who want to be able to make sure that they get your book but how can people connect with you to be able to talk to you and or your team about the resources that you have uh yeah so it'd be jason j-a-s-o-n at and then agency-intelligence.com, Jason at agency-intelligence.com. Now I would be the best place to start. I do have a whole team that does all this. I'm just the pretty front guy is what I, you know what I mean? I'm just like, like the president. The president really doesn't do anything. He's just a pretty front person. And then everybody else, all the advisors and stuff are the ones that do everything. That's how it is around here. I'm just the pretty face. And I'm not even I pretty. That's just what somebody told me. Oh, well, you know what? I, it works. <laughs> it works. Joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very well, much, Teresa. You. We appreciate you very much. Everybody, this has been another amazing episode of the Power of Women in Insurance podcast with um, Jason Cass, our very first, first. Wow. number one male guest on I, the platform. That is awesome. That is so awesome. So I usually say at this point that every single Wednesday, we have another amazing woman that we do feature in the insurance space. But today, I'm actually going to say... Check us out because every single Wednesday we highlight another amazing person in the insurance space and events that you can go to, things that you can do, places that you can go to be able to grow your career and be able to get out there and achieve your dreams. Make sure you check us out every single Wednesday on pod, on Apple Podcasts, Google iTunes, all the cool places. Because, all the cool places. All the cool places because that is where we are. Everybody, I'll talk to you next week and have a really good one. Bye.